Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, to celebrate world living now the mysteries of our faith, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and for peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. Now when David the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in the house of Siba, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell the servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you, David, that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you. You shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. 
your throne, David, shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness. Generations, I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. You said, I have made a covenant. Chosen one, I have sworn to my servant David, I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. He shall cry to me. My Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation, forever I will keep my steadfast love for Him, and my covenant with Him will stand firm. Forever I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord. Of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to the one who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Christ Jesus, of, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writing is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. said to be buried, for nothing will be impossible with God. 
Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospels of the Sundays of Advent have invited us to focus our attention on the prophecies of Isaiah, on images of flowers blooming in the desert. We've contemplated the voice of John the Baptist crying out in the desert to prepare the way of the Lord. Today, on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we're invited to shift our focus to Mary, the Mother of God. In particular, today's Gospel, we see Luke's account of the Annunciation and Mary's yes to the Archangel Gabriel. And it is in this yes to God's mysterious divine will that Mary becomes the model for all Christians. I've said on other occasions, it was in the fall of 1990, that my studies had taken me from Rome to the Hebrew University in Jerusalem for one semester. And many of you will remember it was during the time of the so-called crisis in the Gulf. And just before Operation Desert Shield became Desert Storm in January of 1991, a little group of about 15 priests had the opportunity to travel to Nazareth to celebrate Mass together in the Church of the Annunciation. And I recall how we were really struck by the inscription over the altar in the crypt of the Basilica. I'll give it to you in Latin. Verbum caro hic factum est. It is here that the Word became flesh. There in Nazareth, in inauspicious times, in the midst of danger, in the midst of uncertainty, it's there that the Word became flesh, with the appearance of the angel and the yes of Mary. That altar, so far away in time and place, remains a powerful symbol of how we are called to live our own life of faith, beginning with our own yes to the Word of God. Mary shows us that when we say yes to God, great things can happen. Just as Abraham's yes marks the beginning of God's covenant with Israel, so Mary's yes to Gabriel inaugurates now a whole new phase of salvation history. There's a whole line of theological reflection beginning in the second century that wants to speak about how we both the church as a whole and the individual Christian ultimately come to share in the mystery of Mary's divine motherhood. This is certainly the subject of reflection in chapter 12 of the book of Revelation. There John describes this mysterious woman adorned with the sun, one of the most spectacular symbols in the whole book. Here we find what is at once an image of Israel bringing forth her Messiah, Mary bringing forth Christ. But the image also speaks to us in a spiritual way, in a powerful way, of the Church's ongoing struggle in every generation to continue the mystery of the Incarnation by bringing forth the light of Christ into the world in the face of great opposition, in the face of great darkness. Indeed, St. Pope John Paul II once said, Our Lady's fiat, or yes, in the moment of the Annunciation, echoes that of Jesus, the Word incarnate, to the will of the Father. So we too must add our own personal yes with respect to God's plans in our own life. So continue again in the mystery of the Incarnation as we too bring forth the love, the mercy, the light of God in our first modern world. Mary's model of holiness is the subject of reflection by St. Luke throughout the infancy narratives where she shows us the meaning of a complete and total faith and acceptance of the Word of God. We see both in the Archangel Gabriel's address to her as highly favored one, full of grace, no less than in Elizabeth's words at the visitation, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Mary remains for us a great model of obedience to God's will, of humility, of charity, patient hope, trust in God, profound wisdom. Luke depicts Mary as a model of steadfast fulfillment of our own religious duties in the temple of God, of a devoted and solicitous care for her son, whom we serve not only in the temple, but in the poor, the lost, the abandoned, so many who live, more and more who live, in the margins of our society today. Later in the Gospel, the image of Our Lady of Sorrows. Here, Mary shows us what it means to be at the foot of the cross along with the beloved disciple, Alongside Mary, we reflect on the gift that Jesus makes there in John's Gospel, 
the gift he makes of Mary's spiritual motherhood to us when he says to Mary, Behold your son, and to the beloved disciple, Behold your mother. Mary is a model to us of fortitude in and trial, and difficulty and suffering. In Jesus' expression on the cross, Behold your mother, Jesus invites us to consecrate ourselves to her divine intercession. May Our Lady obtain for us then the graces that we need until Christ is fully formed in the heart of the Church. Finally, in all of these mysteries, Mary remains a powerful symbol of the new creation that will arrive at the end of time. We see in the visions of the book of Revelation and his descriptions of the new Jerusalem. It is in this new creation that we can already participate even now through the life of prayer, the life of the sacraments, the spiritual life, where the newness of God's grace can be experienced every day, especially through our reception of the Eucharist. As we continue then our preparations in the days remaining before Christmas, let us pray that along with John the Baptist, the example of Mary may truly inspire us on our own journey of faith. Let us pray that through the intercession of Mary, as Advent gives way to Christmas, this may be for all of us a time of spiritual growth, a time of blessing, that through our own ongoing yes to God, we may continue then to bring forth the life of Christ, the joy, the peace, the mercy of God into a world so much in need of the joy and peace that God alone can give. Let us now profess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried, He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now present these prayers and petitions to God in heaven, asking to hear and answer the prayers of all who call upon the holy name of Jesus. For the intentions of this Mass, for the repose of the souls of Lorraine Innes, and Emily Martella, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of the Church, entrusted to be good shepherds of God's people on earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority, called to act responsibly, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians everywhere, as they prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, as we work to build our relationships with God and with one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are isolated, homebound, and sick, especially Kevin Paradona, Bill Canada, Tom Jivet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the spiritual and physical well-being of all parishioners and for all who have recently died, especially Ben Cruz and Mirka Dicheco, and for all who mourn them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our Heavenly Father, you know the needs of your people in this passing life. We ask you to hear the prayers we've made and those that remain deep within our hearts, for we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, and to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Amen. Welcome to share the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share. 
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Through the divine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God, that our hearts will receive the sweet music of this life. And contrite hearts are really dominated with the God of love. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord have spread the sacrifice of your hands for the faith and glory of the saints, far as one may remove all this church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that we already rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. So now with the angels, the archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth, full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon the light of you fall, so that there may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your peace. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be yours.
us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's Nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael the Archangel, be our defender in the day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world seeking the ruin of souls.